This is Hold Space, where we celebrate game changers on and off the court. And beside me today, we got the one and only Sophia Fly, a recording artist as well as a DJ. Sophia, how you doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Okay, so before we dive into the Transgender Day of Visibility, as well as the 2S LGBTQ plus community conversation, I do want to give you a super hard question. What's your perspective of the Raptors season so far? I think they're overachieving and it's exciting. I think a lot of people thought Pascal was some kind of like one, two season wonder and he's proving them wrong and it's beautiful to watch. And I'm excited for the playoffs regardless of what the result is. Because again, I feel like they're overachieving right now. Now, the closest that the NBA has been to the trans community was when Dallas Mavericks guard Reggie Bullock's sister was murdered and he became an ally to the queer community how important is allyship, especially in these spaces? It's really great to see from Reggie Bullock as well as Dwayne Wade, uh, who advocated for his trans daughter very publicly. It's basically people in power, people with a voice, using that voice to shine a light uh, to the unique struggles that a community of faces. Uh, because with both of those situations, Reggie and D. Wade, like these are family members of theirs. And you kind of do see a pattern, like people start to care about trans issues and they start to care about LGBTQ plus 2S issues when their family member is affected, right? Because it's very easy to dismiss a group of people that you have no personal connection to. But if your daughter is like in the living room crying because of X, Y reason related to who she is, it's like, what are you going to tell her to not be herself? You know, you're going you're gonna to put up with people telling her that she should be a certain way. You're not going to. How does that make you feel when you like you even say to like yourself like you feel like lesser than? It's definitely I would love for everyone to walk a day in my shoes or other trans women's shoes because it is like I get a, a little bit less now because I think I'm a little more conventionally attractive and pretty these you days. Are <laughs> so, um, but like there have been times it's like you're you're walking down the street and people are giving you dirty looks for just walking down the street and it's like. I don't know, you, you basically feel like you have to have more confidence than everyone else constantly. And you have no one at home to help like reinforce that confidence in you. So it has to like just materialize from thin air. We got to talk about the crimes that can oftentimes get overlooked in the trans community as opposed to other demographics that fall within the broader community as well. When you talk about the murder rate of trans women, specifically black trans women and trans women of color. Um, people just kind of like shrug their shoulders, roll their eyes, whatever. It, it's falling to deaf ears. So if you're an individual that comes from like a rough area, people don't care. They've already accepted that that happens. Um, and it comes down to uh, trans people as well, because some people, again, think we I don't know why they think we do this, but they think we somehow brought it on ourselves. That like, well, that's what you get for going out looking like that or something like that, which is something that happens a lot to cis women as well, too. Right. It's like, oh, you shouldn't have dressed like that if you didn't want to get harassed by men. Like, well, isn't that the men's problem and not like, shouldn't people just be able to dress how they want and everyone can just mind their business? Uh, it needs to be mentioned again. This doesn't apply to everyone, but like I was saying earlier about how, you know, it's difficult to find employment and housing. It means a lot of trans women are led to sex work. Mm -hmm. And that's another thing which affects both trans and cis women when that when you're in sex work and you're a victim of a crime, no one seems to care because they, again, they think you brought it on yourself mm -hmm. or something like that, um, which it's like it's victim blaming 101. It's I do want to get into um, the space of sports and how, you know, myself who's in this sports space, but then other like athletes that are also could be advocates, how we can be better allies to the trans community. Mm -hmm. um, well, talks like this are a perfect example. What Reggie Bullock is doing, what Dwayne Wade is doing. It's literally just speak up for the trans people in your life. And if you find yourself in a position of privilege where people want to listen to you, use it because like they, a lot of the people who are transphobic don't want to listen to me. They won't, they won't listen to me say it, right? I could literally put the most coherent essay argument together and they'll just gloss over and not listen to a word I say. But so if you're someone who they will listen to, who can convince them, then it's, you have power in advocating for trans and LGBTQ plus 2S peoples. Thank you so much for this conversation. I really do truly feel like I learned a lot and I know it's, not easy to share your vulnerabilities with the world. <laughs> so I really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to do that. Glad to do it. Thanks for inviting me.